what is good everybody thank you guys for clicking on this video this is the top five biggest chokes of the last decade who is gonna take the spot who isn't let's find out man but i will say honorable mention the 14 seattle seahawks spoiler alert are not on this list here's why one they were trying to throw off that defense so i i'm not saying i agree with the call but i can understand where they were possibly coming from and two Seattle won the Super Bowl the year before, so it does take maybe like a smidge of the sting off, but still, if I had to rank it, it would go number six. But let's dive into the chokes, man, of the last decade in terms of just how bad it was. Not saying the biggest choke in terms of biggest deficit and all, but just how bad it was. But I'm going to dive into it right now. Let's start off with number five. We got the LA Clippers blowing a 3-1 lead against the Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference Semifinals. So, playoff P, aka pandemic P during there, just completely disappeared. Kawhi Leonard disappeared. It was just a monumental disaster. I mean, you're talking about a team that was up 3-1, up 17 in game five, and they blew it. You know, you had Patrick Beverly running all around the court. Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic could not. They just kept buying buckets. And unfortunately, this was like the last year that these three played together. These, you know, the furthest that these... This entire core really went to as far as it did with each other because the Clippers, yes, they did make the Eastern Con or the Western Conference Finals, but Kawhi had an ACL injury. So unfortunately, this was just a really blown opportunity. And now you look at it, PG's in you know Philly, and uh, the Clippers. I mean, they just—it's going to be tough for them to reach the mountaintop. Yes, they got James Harden, but we'll see how how that works out for them. Number four, we got the 2016 World Series. So, you're looking at the in, the Cleveland Indians at the time. They were up 3-1, yeah, but they took the first two games that were in Chicago. They split in Cleveland, took the first two in Chicago. So, the pre presumption, even among Cubs fans, was, you know, it's a 3-1 hole. Cleveland should be able to close this out, right? They know this team too well. That wasn't the case. They came back, they won three straight games because of outstanding pitching, hitting from, you know, Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, and I hate to say this guy's name, but Addison Russell. They had monumental success in terms of hitting, pitching. They were by far the best team in baseball that year. So I would say it was more of a comeback than a choke, but still, I mean, you're looking at a team, the Cubs, who won their first World Series in 108 years. Great storyline, right? But it was also, you know, 66 years later, where you're looking at the Cleveland Guardians who were looking to capture their first title, and it just did not work out that way. They blew a lead, and they haven't been back since then, much less won it since then, and they have still not won a World Series since 1948. Number three, the 2014-15 NFC Championship game between the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. So not only did the Packers botch an onside kick, but they were up 16 to nothing with the ball. And then one of the most infamous names in Packers history, Brandon Bostic. He fumbled the ball as it was leaping up into the air on an onside kick by Steven Hauschka. And Chris Matthews recovered it, leading to a beast mode touchdown and Aaron Rodgers' drive to tie the game. And just a blown, blown game in overtime for the Packers as Jermaine Curse and Russell Wilson connected for a 35-yard touchdown. Unfortunately for Russell Wilson, until the end, they had not had a single connection. And Russell Wilson actually threw four picks targeting Jermaine Curse. So it was just a monumental just success for Seattle and just heartbreak for Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers and them have not captured a second ring yet and they never will because obviously Aaron Rodgers is in New York now and he seems washed up the Packers you know they seem like they seem that they can make it back eventually but we'll just see how it goes man but this is just a really bad choke by the Green Bay Packers number two the 2016 NBA finals I went so back and forth on this between putting it at one and two but here's the thing that gives it a little bit of a, you know, just a little bit of a sting taken away. There's two things. One, they won the year before. So, yeah, they were a little bit, you know, granted, they had the bet that 
The reason why this is so up high is because they had a chance to be the best team of all time. And that was not the case. They ended up going as one of the most biggest disappointments in NBA history, if not the biggest disappointment. So they won the year before, but they also had multiple games to potentially fix it. And Draymond got suspended in Game 5. And they won the first two games, let's not forget, by a combined margin of 48 points. And then they split the two in Cleveland, which led to a 3-1 hole. And prior to this, no team had ever come back from down 3-1 in the finals. They were 0-32 in finals history. And we got it done. They went up 3-1 in Cleveland. LeBron and Draymond got into it, leading to Klay Thompson making controversial remarks on LeBron James, saying, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. LeBron responds with a devilish laugh. And look what he did in games 5, 6, and 7. Back-to-back 41-point games and then a triple-double in game 7. This was the greatest three-game stretch in LeBron James' entire life. And it brought home the title to the land and the great state of Ohio. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Klay Thompson for provoking LeBron. But yeah, as far as the Warriors, man, this was one of the worst choke jobs in all of sports. Simply because they had a chance to be the best team in NBA history. And they just blew it. So it was just a crusher for Golden State. Yeah, they won four titles, but they're always going to be like, man, we had that one. It's always going to be the case. So I'll put it at number two. Number one by a, just a mere smidge is the 28-3 Atlanta Falcons collapse against the New England Patriots. So they were up 28-3, yes, and they went up 21-0 after a Robert Alford pick six against Tom Brady. However, yes, it was a choke. There was also some bad luck involved. I mean... You know, this Edelman catch, I would not call that a choking ability. That was just a great, great, great play by Edelman. But I don't understand what you're doing. You are you have Devontae Freeman in the backfield. Why are you throwing to Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu? You know, you're trying to milk the clock. You're up 28 to 20. I don't understand why you don't just milk the clock. You know, passing the ball here gave Brady and the Patriots another chance. You know, you get another first down. It could be all but over. But that was just not the case. It was just a mixture of bad luck and just poor execution and just heartbreak. And the Patriots, you give them a lot of credit. You give Brady credit. This was his defining moment. Similar to how LeBron's defining moment was the 2016 Finals. This was Brady's moment. The Falcons were seeking their first ever Super Bowl title in franchise history. And that is exactly why I put it at one. Because just not only is the biggest choke in NBA history, but or NFL history rather, but you're trying to go for your first Super Bowl, that is just a crushing way to lose. But as far as the Falcons, at least it was to Tom Brady. At least that was his defining moment. But that's just a bad choke, honestly. That's just That takes the cake for me as number one. So that'll, that'll do it, guys. Thank you all for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. Um, there were some ones that I had to think about. I also had to think about the order because, you know, it was very tricky. However, I came to a conclusion... That this was not deficit based, but it was more so just in terms of how bad it was, you know, for the fan base, for the franchise as a whole. Took all involved, but you guys have a great one. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you guys next time.